Hello, beautiful people of the great free state. Uh, I'm Carla Garrick and welcome back to the Carla Garrick Show. It is episode 42. And if it feels like it's been a while, it feels that way for me too. I've been super busy. I've also honestly been struggling a little bit with procrastinating and I don't know why, but that has sort of come to this show. So I will be talking today a little bit about procrastination and maybe some tricks and tools that you can use and that I've been trying to implement in my life to make sure that I'm getting the things done that I want to get done. Um, I will also be talking about this new NBC series that just came out. Uh, if you haven't heard about it, NBC Boston has done a 11 part episodes, a mini docu series about the free state movement here in New Hampshire. And I'm featured and uh, all in all, I think it wasn't too bad. So we will get into that as well. Of course, as always, I want to touch a little bit on what's up with trending politics, what's in the news, what's happening with vaccines and all of that good stuff. And then we'll end with some upcoming events that will be happening around the free state in the next couple of weeks, mostly uh fun stuff that I would love to see you at. So thank you for joining me again. Many of you may have caught the episodes earlier in this year that I did with Tom Woods. Um, I talked a little bit about my struggle with alcohol and how I sort of overcame that. So the reason I bring that up is just to give you a sense of, I am a, a, a thoughtful person who really does try and figure out how we can go about being the best humans we can possibly be. So as I mentioned, I've been struggling a little bit with procrastination. This is something I've always had. I think it is um, a evolution from me as a sort of people pleaser. In other words, you know, I kind of grew up in a in an environment in a milieu where people were like, they would tell you what to do. And then if you wanted to make people happy, you would excel in those things. As I've grown over, uh, older over time, and in fact, the reason I missed a couple of shows was uh, February is my birthday month, and last week was my 51st birthday. So I took a little time off, and my uh, amazing husband uh, spoiled me and took me up to Mount Washington area. We went and we took the the uh, mountain cog, the Mount Washington cog, up to uh, the mountain to look down on Bretton Woods, and uh, and really just had a really good fun time. Um, but that, of course, isn't really an excuse not to be hitting your marks. You know, even if you're having your birthday or something special is happening, if you're living a purpose-driven life and sort of an intentional life and you're setting yourself up with good habits and good uh, processes, then you should be able to, to continue to excel no matter what life's throwing at you. But we're real people and sometimes things come up or sometimes you're just not in the mood. Now, candidly, I don't know about you guys, but I'm often not in the mood to do anything in February in New Hampshire. I've actually learned over the years that uh, the weather can have a really strong impact on me and that I find that I personally do struggle in the month of February <laughs> with, uh, with you know, the dark and uh, just the long winter and all of that. We got about six inches of snow today. Uh, you know, so, so what are some of the tricks and what are some of the tools that we can use to, to get over it when you're just not feeling it. So years and years ago, I read this article that was called The Power of Positive Procrastination. And I kind of loved the idea of it because what it was talking about is that often when we're procrastinating about one thing, we tend to go do other things that may also need to get done. So a good example might be, um, I am currently studying for my real estate exam, which I'll be taking in February, uh, in March. Um, but I don't really want to st struggle for a uh, study for it. So, uh, guess what? 
my kitchen's really, really clean. And so all my laundry is washed and folded. All the socks are matched. Why is that? That is the power of positive procrastination. But what if you're just not feeling it? Now, of course, for the winter, there are several different tools you can implement. First of all, I would highly recommend uh, if you're feeling the blues or the winter downs, I would uh, introduce extra vitamin D into your vitamin repertoire. If you're not taking a vitamin D, you should be taking one anyway. Most people are deficient. People up in the Northeast are definitely deficient during the winter months. We actually saw during COVID that most of the people who, who passed away actually had vitamin D deficiencies. So I would definitely uh, up that. You can get it at Rite Aid, do all of that. If you don't have a happy light, you might want to get one of those. I have mine down here on my desk. That is just a way to make sure you're getting enough um, light to, to really trigger some of, you know, more our reptilian brains to, to, to feel a little happier. Um, but another tool you can try for, for procrastination is, of course, taking a really big goal and trying to break it down into smaller, more manageable incremental steps. So by way of example, my New Year's resolutions, which I don't think we've talked about yet, um, sort of involved three, I would say, general aspects. The one was uh, for 2023, one of my goals is just to lift my friends. Um, so that would be just seeing the opportunities for what other people are doing and really trying to help them succeed with their projects. You know, I'm in a big community and I want to see people succeed. So for first and foremost, in my mind, is sort of this lift my friends mentality. That one actually so far has been fairly easy. Another New Year's resolution that I introduced for myself this year was I want to be more scheduled and routine about my fasting. For a lot of you who've been watching the show for a long time, you know that I've been dabbling in uh, in fasting over the years. And uh, last year I did, I think, four or five day fasts over the year, uh, a couple of one or two day fasts here and there. But for this year, I'm really hoping to set a goal that I would fast for five days every month um, so that by the end of 2023, I would have fasted for 60 days, which kind of sounds bananas, right? That's literally two months of not eating. But I'm curious to see several things. One is, can I do it? Can I stick to something like that? Uh, so far, so good. I have uh, fasted in January for five days in a row. Uh, that went fairly well. You know, it's winter. You can cuddle, uh, you know, kind of nest and, you know, you don't have to. So it, I find actually the fasting is quite easy in the winter. And then uh, for the month of February, uh, we also did five days. Uh, which we started right before my birthday and then broke. So from that Tuesday and then my birthday was on the 18th of February. Uh, so we broke it with a dinner dinner that evening. So those uh, so far I've been sort of on track with in terms of my resolutions. Why do I fast? Are you just bananas, Carla? Um, no. There's a lot of health benefits that we are now seeing uh, the science support in terms of fasting. Of course, we know in millennia, uh, many religions have fasting processes. Uh, you know, uh, it, it, it stimulates different things. It helps to reset some body stuff. Obviously, if you have some fat you want to lose, it helps with that. So there, there, there is a myriad of health benefits to fasting. But the reasons I really enjoy it is I, um, I like the sort of spiritual aspect of it. Like I feel very in tune with my body, with my environment, uh, with my life. It makes me quite reflective. I like to write, as everyone knows. Um, so that sort of gives me that element of it. And, um, and I like the control, I think, or the relationship between myself and my own um, 
intentions, right? So if we're looking at sort of what your resolutions are, or maybe the things you're working on this year, you know, it, 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 it's, it's sort of a test, right? Like you go, oh, this is going to be hard and I'm not going to be able to do this. But then you do. And so you start maybe with a one day fast or a 12 hour fast and then you do a day and then maybe you do three days. Then you try five days and you try seven. Then you go, seven doesn't work for me. Let me go back to five. But also as I'm doing this process, I am experimenting and seeing which models or what works well for me. So I think that, you know, as you look to what you're trying to accomplish this year, and I highly recommend for everyone, even if you don't really believe in New Year's resolutions, you should intentionally be living your life. So you should be thinking about uh, what do you want to accomplish in 2023? And it could literally be something as simple as, uh, I'm going to unpack the dishwasher every day. Or one of mine is like, I got to touch the gym every day. Now, I mean, I'm hitting that at maybe 80% at the moment, but it is in my mind. And I like to, you know, literally sometimes I'll be like, it's, I'm in bed and I'm like, oh, I didn't do anything in the gym today. But because my resolution was touch the gym, I'll just go downstairs and literally like, you know, do a stretch on the bar and then go get back into bed. And that is just that relationship and that integrity that you start to establish with yourself. If you set a goal, it's between you and your goal and your mind and your intentions and you can do anything you set your mind to, or at least that's the idea. So if you're looking at your New Year's resolutions, maybe you've already let something slide, regroup, look at it again, go, is this important? Then look at your goal and go, can I break this down into smaller, more incremental things? How can I set myself up for success? And then own those wins, right? Like when you do something, Give yourself a check. I mean, my my journal, which I highly recommend everyone should do, is just filled with smiley faces and hearts and checks because I'm really trying to reinforce and reward myself for the things that I am accomplishing that I want to accomplish. All right. So I don't know if you saw, but if you're on Twitter, National Divorce is in the news. It's in the zeitgeist. I guess Marjorie Green, Taylor Green, whatever her name is, uh, said something on television. Now everyone's very interested in this topic. So as many of you know, I've been working on the issue of, of uh, New Hampshire independence or sort of how can we position ourselves as the great granite state to uh, to stop being so subjected to terrible policies coming out of DC that are robbing us blind and really not serving us. You know, we're at the stage where we look like we may be on the cusp of a war, a nuclear war. Um, these are all very troubling things. So I feel very proud that this is something I identified and saw many, many years ago and that I have uh, principled and routinely and very thoughtfully approached. So there's this new series that came out. Uh, the series itself is called uh, Life, Liberty, and the Pursuit of New Hampshire. This is a series that was made by NBC Boston. They came out from the start at Porkfest last year. Uh, and they've been working with many free staters and many naysayers as well and critics of the free state project and the free state movement. Um, and so they dropped their series came out on Monday. Um, I'll be doing some interviews with them over the coming weeks and I'm uh, trying to get the rights to be able to show this to you guys as part of the Carla Garrick show. Uh, if that doesn't work out and you want to find more information on this, you can go to, if you search for NBC, Life, Liberty, and the Pursuit of New Hampshire, you'll find uh, the first seven episodes are now online. These are easy, bite-sized, 13-minute episodes. They're really quick to watch. They're well-made um, and, um, and I think fairly fairly reflect the free state movement you know we've we we have a lot of crit, crit 
critiques and criticisms and naysayers and people who really don't like us, for the most part, all of that stems out of ignorance, uh, when people don't know or understand something and they just hear stuff, they, they uh, might, you know, suffer under misapprehensions or misunderstand what's happening. So all in all, I was pretty nervous about uh, what was going to come out, but I feel pretty good that, uh, you know, everyone's represented. You get a good sense of the community. You get a sense of how much people love and take pride in the 603 and the lives we're building here, the true live free or die ethos that we all share. Um, and then the haters in my opinion, just kind of seem a little unhinged. Um, I was recently at an event and uh, one of the things that the people at that event seemed to really resonate for them was that we should start going on the offensive with, uh, with some of these folks who are uh, mischaracterizing and misrepresenting and frankly, in some cases, uh, maybe maliciously, misrepresenting uh, the facts of the matter. I, I was, you know, quite frankly, a little shocked at some of the representations and may take it under advisement to sort of see what uh, legal avenues are open there in terms of, of some of that. But be it as it may, highly recommend you go check out the episodes. Um, I'm featured in many of them, but the one that I will be on NBC with is the um, Pork Fest episode. They, they cover several things. It starts with sort of the manifesto, which of course was just the statement of intent and the sort of purpose. Hey, if we all concentrate in one place, if you believe in liberty, then we can, if we put the right-minded people together, then we can actually build this example to show people that the ideas of liberty are both worth fighting for, which I fully know and understand, especially having gone through COVID, or that, um, that you know, we can, we can really instill in people this desire for a better future. Uh, speaking of coming through COVID, uh, feels like the gift that keeps on giving. Uh, the latest news there is it does appear that there is a lot of um, excess deaths in highly vaccinated uh, uh, countries. Everyone seems to be fighting a little bit about the 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 um, the data at the moment, but I will tell you it does not look good for the uh, big pharma vaccine manufacturers. I was kind of surprised, and I would highly recommend folks who are curious about this, go to my website, carlagerick.com. Of course, that's C-A-R-L-A-G-E-R-I-C-K-E.com. I blog there regularly. I try and put something up almost daily. Um, but what I've been doing over the past few weeks is... I recently learned that Adam Schiff, who is a shifty, shifty little shifty guy, um, he's a congressman from California, I believe, anyway, did a deep rabbit hole down with him. I guess he's, he, he, I don't know, the guy seems really sketchy. But the reason he came up on my radar was this dude, this sitting congressman, Adam Schiff, Shifty Shifty, uh, banned a bunch of movies, documentary movies, independently made feature length documentary movies, got banned off Amazon and Netflix by this one dude say so. Now, I don't know about you, but that does not sound like the America I know and understand. I don't think that that is freedom. I don't think anything should be off the table in terms of discussion, especially when reasonable people disagree. And also science is literally people arguing about what the answer is and then coming up with a formula to test it and then looking and seeing if they can replicate the experiment, et cetera, et cetera. We might actually be in a post-science world. But anyway, so this Adam Schiff guy banned three 
anti-vaccine documentaries off of Amazon. I was really shocked to learn this, and that was a pretty big red flag for me that we should probably see what those documentaries have to say. So I've slowly been watching them. Um, the first one, I did put the review up already. I'm writing the second review for the second one. But uh, the first one had was called Shoot 'Em Up, The Truth About Vaccines. That one was made sort of by a mom with her baby. It's a little amateurish, but you'll see all the regular people being interviewed. And there was uh, some really interesting information, things I hadn't really known or understood. Um, and it made me seriously start to reflect on my own vaccine journey and my own health and sort of what that landscape looks like. By way of example, I have very distinct memories of being eight, nine years old. We were living in, uh, it was a hardship post in, in Botswana at the time. And uh, we had to, of course, get jabbed because, you know, if you're traveling a lot and as a diplomat brat, I, uh, I got a lot of vaccines. And this in particular situation was something um, really uh, killed my biome. I just literally had a stomach ache every time I ate for years. Like I would just be crying under the dining room table at night. And so that memory sort of came back up because one of the things I learned in these vaccine documentaries is that some of the vaccines uh, they now think do have a very negative impact on your biome. Um, and as you know, as we're discovering more about sort of the, the gut mind connection and how these things are all interrelated, I found that quite interesting. So shoot them up, the truth about vaccines. That review is up at carlagarrick.com. I also wrote a long essay, which was just a reflection on sort of my, my, my own sense of, of what impact vaccines may possibly have had on me. Um, many of you know that back in 2008, right before I moved to New Hampshire, actually, I was forced by the City College of New York to get a vaccine in order to get my degree. At the time, I thought it was kind of bananas, but I was also like, oh, well, I'm moving in a couple of weeks. I just need to get this done. I need my degree issued for my master's in fine arts for creative writing. And so I just kind of gave in and did it. And it had an incredibly negative impact on my health, including uh, allergies that I'd never had, rheumatoid arthritis, joint pain, permanent lower back pain, um, just headaches. Uh, I gained a lot of weight. Uh, my biome was just really messed up, um, IBS, all kinds of issues. So if you're struggling with anything, maybe post uh, jabby jabs, um, I want you to start to reflect in the same way that we were talking about earlier. You have to set your intentions. You have to think about you, your body, your impact. Stop worrying about everyone else. Just worry about you. Uh, one of the other documentaries I just finished, I haven't written the review yet, but that will be going up is, uh, I think it was called Vaxxed, V-A-X-X-E-D. This one is very professionally made. It is, uh, it is very good. I think that the points they raise are interesting. Um, they also show Big Pharma to be as guilty as we all think they are. Of course, most of these uh, big pharmaceutical companies have paid the largest criminal fines in the history of the world for fraud, by which I mean these companies lie to you, the patient or the customer, and then when they get caught out by the regulatory bodies who are being paid to look the other way, then you know they pay a fine to the CDC or the FDA, and life goes on as usual. So um, again, if you are struggling with any kind of health issues, I want you to go watch these documentaries and see if we can figure out what's up. All right, so um, other things that have been happening in the great free state of New Hampshire, 
Uh, I went to see Vivek Ramaswamy, I believe is how you say his last name. Anyway, this guy is running for president. Uh, he's been doing town halls all over New Hampshire. Uh, he seems pretty cool and interesting, dynamic, great speaker, good energy. And... Um, ah. Sorry about that. Great energy. And Vivek, uh, if you can see him around the state somewhere, I would highly recommend you go at least meet him. Uh, business person, anti-globalist, kind of has a good shtick. So anyway, was a good meeting, went last night, quite interesting. In terms of upcoming events that are happening, this Saturday, February the 25th, if you are watching this before then, 4 to 6 p.m. at the JFK Coliseum here in Manchester, we will be having a hockey match between the Libertarian Party of New Hampshire and the NHGOP. I went last year, it was a lot of fun. If you like ice hockey, if you like good, fun competition, and if you like supporting um, private charity for private schools, for uh, homeschooling and, and school choice, the proceeds go to the child, uh, Children's Fund, and you can buy your tickets at nhlibertyhockey.com. That'll be 4 to 6 this Saturday, February the 25th. Next weekend, if you are in Manchester, come to Liberty Forum. Come meet the community. Come see what we're about. Um, I'm opening the doors to some of my Republican brethren. I really want to make sure everyone is uh, thinking about how we can build out a base that is young, dynamic, and future visionaries. Uh, Liberty Forum will be taking place next weekend. So that's March 3rd through the 6th. It's um, over at Backyard Brewing uh, at the hotel. Tickets are still available. They're 100 bucks at the base level, and then there's some VIP tickets and exhibitor tickets as well. You can get more information at nhlibertyforum.com. I will be doing my keynote at 5.30 on Friday, and then we'll have some drinks and some hanging out. Saturday's a full day. Sunday's a full day. So come join the fun. That's nhlibertyforum.com. That is all I have for this week. I am really glad to be back with you guys. Hopefully I'll be back again next week and we can put this procrastination bug, uh, you know, tamp it down and make sure we're doing the things we need to be doing to live happy, purpose-driven lives. If you have any comments for me or any questions, uh, of course, hit that subscribe button, but feel free to reach out to me, Carla at CarlaGarrick.com. Send me an email, give me feedback. I prefer not to get the hate mail, uh, but you know, if you feel compelled, please also feel free to do that. And I will see you guys again back here next week. Until then, everyone have a marvelous, marvelous week. And remember, together we can live free and thrive. Thanks, guys.